On this episode of West Chicago Railroad, let's take a look at one of my favorite engines, the MTH F40PH and the Metro Bi-Level commuter cars that it pulls. So I've wanted to do this review for quite a long time, and I think now is probably uh, the best time to do it. Uh, just a little kind of interesting fact about this engine and the bi-level passenger cars. This is the very uh, first video that I ever uploaded on West Chicago Railroad, uh, my U YouTube channel. So uh, now it's, you know, my layout is in its infancy. There's obviously just a, a plain board there. Um, I did a quick just kind of running and stopping of the Metra with the passenger cars. But I think everything has kind of come full circle now. And it's time for me to actually, you know, with my layout pretty much complete. I mean, nothing's always 100% right. We're always tweaking and adding stuff. But I kind of felt now it's a good time to uh, yeah, to do a full review on, on both the F40 PH and the passenger cars as well. So please enjoy this review. So let's go over a little bit of history. The EMD F40 PH is a four axle, 3000 horsepower, diesel electric locomotive built by General Motors Electromotive Division, EMD, in several variants from 1975 to 1992. Intended for use on Amtrak's short haul passenger routes, it, it became the backbone of America's diesel fleet after the failure of the EMD SDP40F. The F40PH also found widespread use on commuter railroads in the United States and with Via Rail Canada. Now, the designation F40PH stands for the following F for full width call car body. 40 as a locomotive is part of EMD's 40 series, based on the GP40-2 freight locomotive, P for passenger service, and H for head end power. Now, Metro's bi-level passenger cars, also known as gallery cars, as there's an open space between the two sides of the upper deck. Uh, so basically, when you walk in, you can... The people on the bottom can see the people on the top, and vice versa. It's basically the center of it is completely open. Uh, there is an area in the middle on top where people can place their bags and stuff. Um, but uh, for the most part, it's, you know, it's, it's open. And the reason for this is so when the conductor comes through, through the car, uh, they can take the tickets, um, scan or punch the tickets for both the bottom level and the top level passengers. Now... Personally speaking, I was a Metro rider for around 10 years. The computer cars are actually pretty comfortable. Uh, they have heating and air conditioning and even had a washroom. So some of the newer cars were built with uh, handicap assistance. So they had a, and they're marked on the car itself, uh, but they have a crane, you know, one of the lift cranes. So it could come out and lift a person in a wheelchair um, into the passenger car. Uh, there were also um, uh, bikes. You could bring bikes onto these uh, passenger cars. There are a few little rules behind that, but for the most part, I think it's like one bike or two bikes per passenger uh, car. Uh, not 100% sure on that, but it's but you can indeed bring your bike. Uh, another cool fact is some of the lines, some of the routes actually allow for a uh, quote unquote beer car. So there's actually a, uh, a car that actually sells alcohol in it. Uh, and yes, you can bring alcohol onto the Metro passenger cars and you can buy alcohol on them from the special cars. Now, again, not all routes have that, um, but some of them do. Okay, so Metra is a commuter rail system in the Chicago metropolitan area, serving the city of Chicago and surrounding suburbs. The system operates 242 stations on 11 rail lines. It is the fourth busiest commuter rail system in the United States by ridership and the largest and busiest commuter rail system outside the New York City metropolitan area. There were 83.4 million passenger rides uh, back in 2014. Uh, the estimated busiest day for metro ridership occurred on November 4th, 2016, uh, the day of the Chicago Cubs 2016 World Series victory. Um, 
you won't hear me mention Cubs too much on this channel. <laughs> I'm a White Sox guy, but um, you know, I'll give credit where credit is due. <laughs> now, how did all this get started? Well, to provide stability to the commuter rail system, the Illinois General Assembly formed the Regional Transportation Authority, RTA, in 1974. Its purpose was to fund and plan the Chicago's region public transportation. After initially using secondhand equipment, the RTA took delivery of the first EMD F40 PH locomotive in 1976. That F40 PH fleet is still in service today. The companies that have long provided commuter rail in the Chicago area continue to operate their lines under the contract to the RTA. Metro operates 11 lines, most of which date from the mid-19th century. So yes, it, they go back that far. Um, not Metra, but the actual railroad lines themselves. Uh, four lines are operated under contract. The BNSF line service is operated by BNSF Railway. The three lines out of the Ogilvy Transportation Center, formerly Northwestern Station, are operated by the Union Pacific Railroad. The other seven lines are operated by the Northeast Illinois Regional Commuter Rail Corporation, the NIRC. So... What are the 11 lines? Okay, well, so there's the BNSF Railway, the Heritage Corridor, Metra Electric District, the Milwaukee District North Line, the Milwaukee District West Line, North Central Service, Rock Island District, Southwest Service, Union Pacific North Line, Union Pacific North West Line, and the Union Pacific West Line. Now, little tidbit here. Uh, this particular Metra engine is modeled, or at least the, the sound package for the PFA is modeled after the Union Pacific West Line, which is also my own Metra line. So I'm, I, only, I live about, you know, two, three blocks from the Metra line. I can walk to the Elmhurst train station in about five minutes. Uh, so it's very, very cool and very personal to know that this particular engine... Uh, actually has all of the, well, not all of the routes, but uh, the routes that are in the uh, the sound system on this belong to the Union Pacific West line. So uh, when I run around, maybe we'll get lucky and uh, we'll have it announce my stop. So who knows? Metro uses a push-pull configuration on its routes. Well, what does that mean? Well, this means uh, that the train can be driven from either end of the train whether having a locomotive at each end or not. So how do they do this? Well, the general setup for a Metro commuter train is an engine at one end, so an F40 PH at one end, um, general commuter bi-levels in the middle, and then a special bi-level car called the cab car or control car. And this is basically a standard bi-level commuter car, except on the very top, at the back of the car, there's actually a cab and the engineer can ride in that cab and control the train from there. So when trains are going inbound, the engineer sits in the control cab uh, and he goes into Chicago. And when the, uh, when the train is making its way outbound into the suburbs, the engineer is in the F40 engine. So kind of cool. I do have a cab car uh, that came with my four-car Metro bi-level set, and we will go over that cab car as well. So let's go over some features here. Um, so let's start at the front uh, of the engine here. We have a, um, a snow plow uh, with MU hoses. We have a nicely decorated uh, front end with the classic Metro stripes. Uh, there's headlights here. There's marker lights on top. There is a blinking beacon on top as well. Uh, there are uh, two sand caps here. Uh, there are plenty of rails on this thing, as you can see, and rails. Uh, here's a horn here. Uh, we have, uh, this is number 137, a uh, little flag here, Metra symbol, and then we have Metra City of West Chicago. And yes, uh, if you want to know, uh, the, the uh, actually the origin of my YouTube channel and why I call it West Chicago Railroad, well, there you go. It's actually named after this particular engine. Okay, so moving down, uh, again... Uh, the standard Metra colors for the red on top, blue at the bottom. Really cool Metra 
uh, right here on the side. Uh, there's uh, exhaust fans uh, on top, cooling fans, and um, right here is the um, actually uh, the exhaust itself. And uh, uh, again, usual kind of pour smoke in there. This one's really kind of, you really kind of have to use a needle dropper in that one uh, because the fins on this particular exhaust stack are super small. And uh, if you don't do it right, you can spill uh, smoke fluid kind of all over the top of your engine. So uh, be uh, very careful uh, when uh, pouring smoke into these F40 units. And here's the back of the F40 uh, again. Um, handlebars here, here's a door here. Uh, handrails, got a little chain here. Uh, there's some uh, rear headlights there. Um, you know, portal coupler. Uh, got some steps here. The um, the trucks on this engine uh, and the fuel tank and kind of the bottom details are uh, fantastic as MTH always does. Now, as you'll see in the back, um, I do actually have the other F40 um, kind of a paint job that you could get and that's the Operation North Pole which is the holiday train and uh, we'll go over that there are a couple of differences on that one from the uh, from the 137 but because well two things because I have another Metro F40 engine and you know it's December and we're you know the holidays are here I thought it was a good time to kind of uh, go over that one as well okay so let's go over um, some of the minor differences here there's actually three differences between the um both of these f40 engines now the first one uh if you check out the top here is that this one has a piece on top now it looks to me like it's a hep generator or some type of generator i'm guessing it's a hep generator but but um f40s actually do have hep generators because they pull commuter cars and they need to give power to the commuter cars, but it's actually integrated into the engine itself. So this right here actually should be twin air conditioning units. So this is probably part. This is probably modeled after uh, the newer F40 PHs, which have um, new air conditioners on top. Now I'm guessing they didn't have the pieces for that for this particular uh, tooling. Um, so they put this piece up here to, you know, simulate it looking like an air conditioning unit. But yeah, there is no external HEP unit on top uh, for F4 Metro's F40 PHs. They, these are supposed definitely supposed to be air conditioning units. So uh, the second, obviously, as you can see, is the paint job. So this is modeled uh, very accurately um, after the Operation North Pole engine. Uh, and of course it's number one, two, five, <laughs> um, for Christmas. And, uh, this one pulled actually, uh, a bi-level commuter car, uh, or, uh, several of them that were actually painted with the, you know, holiday graphics as well. Now, MTH didn't make any of the holiday, um, commuter cars, but they did obviously, um, turn an F40 into one, which I'm very happy that they did. Um, there's some little different graphics, there's some different writing here, but for the most part it's the same. Um, you know, this is also the other reverse side of the F40 engine as well, but for the most part um, it's identical except for the side paint job and the uh, obviously the top we're supposed to have the air conditioner. Now the third item is that this does not have the same stops. Um, so. This is actually modeled after, or at least the, the sound package is for the Union Pacific uh, Northwest line uh, that goes into Crystal Lake um, and Harvard. So, uh, so this one will actually have different stops than this one does. So, All right, let's take a look at uh, these bi-level commuter cars. Uh, first, MTH did a fantastic job with these. These are um, very, very accurate looking. Uh, uh, especially the, um, you know, the Metra here and the way the windows look and, um, you know, it's not absolutely perfect, but I mean, come on. I mean, you know, they, they, this is based off tooling that's used like on for all of the bi-level uh, commuter cars that MTH does, uh, you know, not just for Metra. So uh, to me, this is top-notch A-plus job here. So 
Uh, as you can see the front, it's pretty basic here. I mean, there's nothing here. These cars are connected. Got a vestibule here, so, um, I'm sorry, uh, diaphragm here. Uh, these cars do, um, uh, will negotiate uh, 042, so that's the minimum curve. Uh, but you know what? They will actually go around 036 as well. So uh, my my external, uh, I'm sorry, my outer loop is 048, so I don't have any problems. Uh, and uh, really quick, just to go back on the F40s, uh, those minimum curve ratings are 031. So they're super, you know, safe on smaller layouts. So, but again, yeah, this, this will take 036 curves, to be honest with you. Um, they do kind of swing out a little bit, so I don't know if you have anything like right next to the the uh, the rail on a uh, on a smaller curve. You know, it might hit it, but for the most part, you should be fine. So uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and move it down a little bit, and let's check out this front door. So, yep. So here we have the front doors, and got a little vent here, and these doors actually do open. So give me one second and we'll get that open. And I'm gonna move the camera down as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and check out this door. So they're they're not too, um, you, know, you gotta take, take your fingernail and you kind of push it open. Um, but they're, you know, that's that's what a vestibule looks like, honestly, for Metra, um, for the most part. I'm kind of glad they did that. I mean, they even have like the bars in here and stuff like that. Um, you know, each of these uh, uh, passenger cars, um, also have uh, you know figures in it as well. Uh, this is part of their um, uh, premier uh, series, as long as and the F40s as well are premier. Um, so they you know they do come with the figures inside. And this is the other end of the passenger car. Um, it you know looks <laughs> exactly the same as the front. Uh, so no change there. However, the next car I'm going to show you is different. So let's go ahead and move on to that one. Okay, so here is the back of the control cab. Uh, so again, it's just your standard, uh, you know, bi-level commuter car, except on the back end, we have a cab, and it's right here. And I don't know if you can see it from that angle. Um, I will try to move this so you can, uh, but there is actually a little engineer figure in there as well. So uh, it has the striping here. Uh, we have headlights. Um, there are external marker lights here, as you can see. This is not, now I imagine at one point, this is how they had marker lights, but uh, modern day here, um, there is no external marker lights like this. The marker lights are actually integrated uh, about midway down on the control cab. So, but um, yeah, there's, and you can actually, which is kind of cool, uh, you can actually set the lighting down here as well. So this, so there's two switches in the bottom of this, uh, this control cab car um, that controls the marker lights being on and off and then also whether or not you want the headlight on off or the emergency uh, light on or off so uh, if you do if you did want to run this with you know this as your lead unit um, then you can actually configure the lighting on that to actually replicate that so pretty cool so I try my best here it's a it's a really tight fit in there, but you can actually see his hands. The engineer's hands are are, are, are kind of in there, like right there. So there is an engineer figure in there. Um, and I did mention too that there are, um, you know, uh, add-on windshield wipers here as well. So uh, this very detailed job on this control cab. It looks awesome. And uh, you, if you buy the four pack of the uh, bi-level passenger cars, um, one of the cars comes as a control cab, uh, which is pretty cool. Now they did offer a two pack as well. Uh, I do at this point reg regret not picking up the two pack uh, because I, I'll tell you that these Metra um, engines and passenger cars are very hard to come by. Um, it's not that MTH, it's, it's not that they're rare because people are buying them up. Um, the fact is, this is a regional product, right? So it's specific to Chicagoland area. So I'm sure they didn't make a lot of this. Like, you know, they're gonna make way more Union Pacific uh, engines than they will Metra engines, right? Just because it's, you know, this is again, specific to Chicagoland. So they didn't, they didn't probably make a lot of stock. So they get bought up and that's about it. 
you'd actually have to, and I saw, I think I saw the two pack on eBay a couple of weeks ago, and I think it went for like $500. I mean, something like that. I mean, the four pack MSRP is $400. So I can, I couldn't imagine what a four pack would go for on eBay. So probably a thousand dollars. I don't know, but I'm not, I have no plans of getting rid of my Metro stuff ever. Um, so um, I, I, I love these things. Um, and hopefully, uh, you know, whatever happens to MTH, because, you know, it's a mystery right now. We don't know what's going on, but hopefully, um, you know, either they stay in business somehow or, uh, they pass their tooling on to somebody else and they're able to, uh, reproduce, uh, these engines. Um, now I, Lionel does have the tooling for the F40 PH, so, um, it's just a matter of a paint job, um, and some, some specific metro detail. Um, I don't remember if if Lionel had any buy levels before. I you know if anybody is out there and knows that or not or put it in the comments, let me know. I, I don't remember a buy level from Lionel, but I could be wrong. All right, so let's go ahead and turn on these engines and we'll see how they sound. Okay, so let's go ahead and start this up. Uh, I'm currently using the y, uh, the MTH Wi-Fi uh, DCS app to do everything. So I'm going to use an extended startup. The sounds on this thing are Thanks. spot on accurate. So whoever did the their homework uh, for uh, getting the sound packages for the F40 uh, Metro engines uh, gets an A plus because everything is like spot on accurate. At least as far as I'm concerned. Let's uh, let's hear the bell.
at that point, it would start moving and um, go from there. But uh, right now, let's go ahead and uh, we're going to get this set up to have them, uh, you know, we'll, we'll run around the layout for a little bit, okay? So just uh, go ahead and stand by. Let's get started. Okay, folks, I think that about wraps it up. Uh, this was a very in-depth review. I think this will end up being one of my longest reviews I have on the channel. Uh, but first I want to say thank you to everybody who has subscribed, liked, or commented on any of my videos. I really appreciate it a lot. Um, I'm continuing to grow. I'm getting close to 300 subscribers. So I've actually bumped up to 100 subscribers in, in almost... Uh, about a month and a half or two months, I've actually grown uh, quite a bit, and uh, my next reach goal is going to be 500 subs uh, subscribers. So um, I'm really confident that I can get there, um, and I really hope I really really hope you guys enjoy my videos. Uh, please like, subscribe, hit that little bell button so you know uh, the next time I uh, you know post a new video, you'll get notified. Um, you know, leave a comment, let me know what you thought about the video. Um, I appreciate any kind of um, any kind of feedback, constructive criticism. Uh, if there's any anything in particular on my layout that you've actually seen uh, that you want me to do a review on, let me know. Um, I know that I haven't done an actual like layout overview, and I think I'm gonna actually do that one next. And I'm gonna go over all the pieces of my layout because there's some areas that I actually have not like you may not be seeing just because I don't. Uh, record on, on, at certain angles, uh, but we'll save that one for next time. So again, folks, thanks for watching West Chicago Railroad.